Money continues with our soulful sister and Don be coming up next. Don't y'all go nowhere. Big Jim, give it to us, boo love. adopted her name from the Central African language, and it means most beautiful. She's here to talk to us about her fourth album entitled Pink Elephant. Y'all give it up for the lovely Ndombe. Let her hear it, baby. <laughs> how to say it. Do you run into that often? I do. I do run into it often because it's not, it's not common. Right. And so I try to make it as accessible to say to people as I possibly can. I phonetically spell it out in D-O-M-B-E-E, -E, Dombey, you know, I, but, but whatever works. I, I, I just really thought it was a beautiful name to adapt from a place that I, is a home for me, but I don't really know because mm -hmm. I was born here. So mm -hmm. to connect to my root, it just makes me feel good to, to own it. It's beautiful that we're having this conversation because Marlon and I were just having that conversation about Africa and, and our roots and saying that we're African and not so quick to say we're African-American. We're simply Africans who live in America. Right. Okay? That's right. That's what it is. That's what it but is. But when we know our history, then we can proudly say we're Africans. Because we really don't know that history. So you having that name, it connects you with the root of where we come from. It does. It does. And then just to learn it. The more I learned about it, the more I wanted to know. And if I can't find exactly where I come from, it to at least have that connection to my history, just to know it, to feel it. I got a chance to, uh, opportunity to go to Africa and just to see people who look like me and have that connection. So it made me feel so good. Yes, baby, good. that connection. Now, Ndombi, I've got to be very honest. I listened to your CD today, and I was floored. Because that CD, baby, the music, your vibe, where do you go to to get that? Because it's a different vibe. Well, you know, the root starts with the church. I'm a PK. Okay, <laughs> preach to kids. Preach to kids with them white boots on, baby, because you're wearing the church. <laughs> So, you know, I grew up singing in church, and that was the origins from that. My parents, they sang. My family, they sang. It was just, it was just there. That's a part of our lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I always connected to it, and I just thought that it would be something I would do. In my mind, I daydreamed it a lot of times, but it was as a kid, I was too shy to say that that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But I kept the dreams going, and I kept the dreams going, and I just... Tried to make it come to, to reality. Fourth album in, baby. You kept fourth the album, going. I know. Fourth album in. Now, growing up, PK kid, mm -hmm. parents, very strict. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to listen to that music. Mm -hmm. At what point did they say, baby, this music is fine. Go and do it. You know what? I think that the first time my father saw me perform, and I was at this time, I was singing background with Erica Badu. And he saw me perform, and he was like, you're so proud. Yes. And then at that point, I had made my first album. And I did, this is a hustle. I've been uh, hustling albums independently for the, the first three were independent albums. Mm -hmm. and make them, put them out in the trunk of your car, sell them, yeah. beauty shop, the whole hustle. And um, then um, he was like, wow, you're doing it. So, and then it made something to me because my father really wanted to be a secular singer. He wanted to sing R&B himself. Mm -hmm. 
but instead his path was to be a pastor of a church. So he, he enjoyed knowing that I, he, I was living his life for him in that way. And my mom, she just, she, I'm coming to the show. Where's my sister? That's right. That's right. And have me a little cocktail, because well, times is different. Well, you know what? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I have to have a cocktail for her, because she's not gonna, she's not gonna have it. But at least she comes to the show. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you like Monique, watch your mouth now. My mom ain't drinking. Like, before, yes, I was like, before you meet my mama, these are the things you do not say. I okay, have a list. Mm. Don't say but. Don't say, you know. What? What? But. B-U-T-T. B-U-T-T. As an ass? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't say that. Don't say it? No. Okay, okay, so you say derriere. Yeah, that works. Okay. Or number two, or what number? Well, now, see, I understand you have explicit lyrics. I do, but my mom hasn't heard that version. When she came to the show, Monique, I sang the clean version. No. Well, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do, sis. I'm going to just give you a little piece of advice, okay? I'm going to give you just a little piece. Because I love explicit lyrics. <laughs> Baby, I love it. I think it really put the song up another notch right, when you right. put your back in it. I like it. I do. I make me feel tingly. <laughs> when you invite your mother to the show, mm -hmm. will you sing your full lyrics in the explicitity? Now, if that's a word or not, I felt good about like it, so it. I threw it out there. Thank you, Rodney. And it's explicitity. Yeah. As you singing it. Now she's gonna be shocked. Now she will. She's gonna be sitting there like, God, Lord, bless her, what is happening? Then walk over to her and put the check in her hand from your night's work. I promise you, she's gonna say, Lord, say all of that you wanna say, sister. Say that. Y'all let her in. Give it up, our sister and Dombi. Don't y'all go anywhere because later in the show, and Dombi performs her latest single, and you truly don't wanna miss it.